Welcome back Stitchineers. So today what I'm going to do is um, a small series I think of tutorials where I show basically um, the, the fundamentals of the, of the game, how to start building a base and be self-sufficient. So just a quick PSA, I have one mod installed which is called More Ore for Mining which you can find on the workshop. It's especially handy since you get more ores for each, um, each ore you, you, you mine. So I would highly suggest that if you're a beginner, that you install this mod. It's just going to be so much easier and you don't need to spend um, all your time mining. As well as your world will uh, yield more FPS since exploring actually takes uh, a lot of FPS in this game. So, uh, the first thing we're going to do is create a new game. So here you can see, you can basically click and choose a, on, a, on different uh, different planets. So. The easiest ones are the Moon and Mars, and uh, these are some mods from uh, the uh, the workshop you can also download. So I would re uh, recommend you start with Mars, simply because um, it actually has an atmosphere, so it's quite forgiving. Um, it's also, for me personally, brighter than the Moon, which is grey and uh, lifeless. So um, this is going to be really easy. So then you want to click on Custom World, so you can customize um, your your world, which is really important, especially if you start out. So select Mars. Um, so it's going to generate uh, according to the seed. Then you can adjust the hunger rate. I would suggest you put it rather low. So we can put it at two. If it actually wants to select it, yes. Cool. Gravity we can leave on uh, on default, as well as the starting conditions. I would suggest that you turn off the research since it's going to require resources that are vital for your, your base. So just leave that off. Uh, Pretty atmosphere, these are just the world settings. Uh, you can leave them on, uh, on default. As weather events, if you want to play with weather and storms, I would suggest you leave that on. It's going to be rather difficult since it can destroy your structures and um, can obscure your solar panels during day, so you won't press any power, but we'll get to that later on. So, then these are just some other variables you can set. Okay, let's uh, just name it, just... Tutorial, yes, you can. Okay, let's create that one real quick. And then we'll let it load. So, all right, so as you see, it's the sun is rising, we have a lander, everything that we've got on us. So a few shortcuts, the numbers you see on the left here correspond to your keyboard. So if I press one on the keyboard, it opens the menu for the helmet, three for the, the suit, four with the, uh, the backpack, five the uniform, and six the belt I've got equipped. Uh, through all these, you can navigate with the scroll wheel, as you see the, the slot that's currently uh, highlighted and if I want to put it into one of my hands I can just simply press F it's going to equip it right into the hand and if I want to put it back into the belt into the highlighted slot I just press F again and it puts it away uh, to note you have different slots here you can see there's a tool slot which only accepts tools which are uh, all the the normal tools as well as wires and also um, duct tape so what you can also do is exchange items, so if you have uh, another tool uh, highlighted, you can simply press F and it's going to swap them. Okay. Also you can press Alt and then drag the items into um, the, um, the corresponding slot with the mouse. As well as pressing E will just change the active hand. So the first thing we're going to do is um, pop out the tablet by clicking the menu on it, so you just simply click it, and put in the tracker cartridge. This is going to be handy um, to find our base every time we go out mining. The thing I, I usually do is exchange it for the cables in my tool belt, and then uh, we can already do one vital thing, which is going to uh, save us a lot of time, is plop down this uh, portable solar panel, and then leave some batteries to charge. So we have some starting equipment in those crates. Those are um, sorted for convenience. So pop out the battery, which is in one of the crates, and then just in here so we're sure that we have some power. So the first uh, steps on the new world is just creating a small platform uh, on which we can uh, start expanding later. So let's just check this area real quick. 
So this one's rising that way, so we can build our solar panels towards the front lane. So let's just put maybe uh, a 4x3 platform down. So let's see. Right here, it seems good. Just get some iron sheets and start welding them together. So take out the torch. The sheets are in one of those construction points right, right here. We've got 50 of them, so it's plenty to weld all the frames. But we're only going to do the first stage of them since we don't actually need to uh, complete them. The second stage is only give you air tightness. done we can take out the first thing and it's the auto lathe. The auto lathe is basically a um, sort of 3D printer with which you're going to print other machines and also your basic sheets to for example weld um, iron frames together, iron walls um, and also you can do um, the plastic sheets to, to put on uh, to windows and stuff so here you have some plastic sheets too. So. We need to finish it real quick, so what we need is uh, some plastic sheets and cable where we've got everything. So, let's see what it requires. Here it says a uh, welding torch and two iron sheets, so we can take out and maybe put the iron sheets away. So, yeah. Turn on the, the welding torch with the right mouse button. So now we need four cable coils. Simply click to finish it. And now the plastic sheets. So now we just need to finish up with the screwdriver. Cool. So now you've got your first machine down. Cool. So here you see you can switch it on and switch it off. Here you have a green button, search button, and two arrows. So what we need to do is connect some power so that it can. Um, be turned on first. This is a data port which is going to be um, coming in handy later. So what we're going to do is um, simply build a solar panel as uh, long as it's day so that uh, we can generate some uh, simple power. So I'm going to build the, the two different variants. You can build an angled one or a flat one. Since I don't really need an angled one since the sun has a pretty uh, lip, normal elliptic trajectory over the um, the surface so it's only one axis we need to track. I can put it down horizontally so we get the most efficiency out of it. And we also need to, to construct it fully with glass sheet. So simply click on it and voila. Now all we need to do is connect it up to the machine. So the best is you take out the specific tool to work with cables which is the, the cable um, the wire cutters which are it's basically going to allow you to override cables. If I turn it with the C button, here I can override it to a junction. If I didn't have it, it's gonna show me that it, it won't uh, place the cable down. So for now, we don't need to connect the data pod just yet, simply because we are not very uh, loaded on resources. And now if you turn it on, it lights up. So cool. Now that we have this, we can access the menu on all the things we can print. And for all of this, we're going to need some resources. So what we want to print first is going to be the electronics printer. So for that, we're going to need iron, gold, and copper. So these three things we're going to need to mine, so we can put the, all the unnecessary stuff away. So it's going to be all the sheets we had, as well as all these cartridges for the, the, the tablet. And now what you're going to do is simply drag and drop our mining belt over our tool belt and get out the drill to get some iron. Here we have some gold, which is going to be really important. 
So, with right click we can turn it on. Or off as well. And I don't know if I mentioned it, but if you press R, you can access the inventory of a specific item you've got equipped. Or the menu, if it uh, is, for example, some ores, I can quickly show it. You put it in your active hand, you press R, you can split it. Either hand and a half or um, into uh, one item. This only works uh, with ingots, sheets, and all the. Uh, the, the oh, not, it, it works with everything except with ingots that you smelt. So we're gonna get a bit of, of gold. Maybe a stack would be good. Okay, so let's finish mining some. Uh, <coughs> let's finish mining the gold. That we have at least one stack. So it's small. Always dig a bit uh, <coughs> further, since you're probably gonna find more. So actually, 50 is more than enough. But most ores stack uh, only up to 50. Let's get a bit more copper. Which is green. So 49 is more than enough. And also let's try to not lose our base, which was somewhere in this general direction. So if you're lost at night, usually what you can do is take out the tablet, turn it on, and we didn't place on the tracking beacon. So let's just put this away. Here it is. To not get lost at night, what you can do is get out the, the tracking beacon, which is actually in one of these crates, maybe the green one, nope, then the red one. This is the beacon. All you can do is go to your base. With Q, you drop an item, you just drop it down, and then you need to activate it by pressing the on button. And now if you take out the tablet, and you scroll down or up, you see it's going to track the tracking beacon. But be mindful that it needs to be charged at all times. So once it loses it, uh, its charge, it's not going to be displayed anymore. But there's going to be an upgrade for this one uh, later down the line. So while it's night, I think what I'm going to do is start placing down all the other stuff we can, uh, can use. So in those crates, we have a lot of useful stuff such as basic um, equipment for an airlock as well as a generator and a furnace. The furnace, especially the arc furnace, is going to be super handy in the beginning since it's uh, going to be using electricity to smelt the ores we need. So just uh, wire it up like this. You can turn it on uh, it's going to be useful in the in the morning once we got power again. So we're going to have one machine per, um, per per frame, so we can already place down our cables for that. Since we're going to have uh, the two most essential machines, which are the um, electronics printer, which is going to go right here, and another thing which is going to allow us to print some uh, all, all that regards pipes and gases and atmospheric uh, items, which is going to be the hydraulic pipe bender. Both of these are going to be placed here. So now that's that this is done, we can also add something else, which is called a solid generator. So this is one of the many generators we have in game currently, and it's going to allow us to burn some coal to produce electricity. So just put that down and connect it up. So as you see, our wires will get, uh, or we are almost uh, going to be running out of wires. So just plop everything down. And what we can also do is, since we don't have any, any power source at the moment, we just light one flare with a right click. And either we keep it equipped in our hand or in our backpack, and we have a portable light. Or we can just drag and drop it, throw it on the ground, and it's going to be visible from a far away distance. So we can uh, find our way back to our base. So what I think I'm going to do real quick is get maybe some iron, if I can find some in the darkness. So here we had our gold, 
which we can take a bit more of, since gold is one of the rarest and most hardest uh, to find resources, or resources, especially um, in the mid game where you need a lot of it to produce heavy cables. But that's gonna come also, uh, like the further down the line. So we're just gonna grab as much as we can from here. And then go back to base, and hopefully it's gonna be day. Also, if you don't know what time it is, since you don't have a, an in-game clock, just look at the temperature. We know that in the daytime, the temperature is going to be at around uh, 20 degrees Celsius, and that uh, at night is going to be at minus maybe 75 or something like that. So just by uh, observing if the temperature is rising or decreasing, you know if uh, at which point in the night you are. So let's see if there's any more gold. There doesn't seem to be, so let's just see where our flare is. Oh, it's been put out. Interesting. So the f okay, no, it's just lightning bug. All right. So this year, our volatiles, which um, are going to be useful in our gas production later. So let's see if we can find some iron. Oh, here we have some. So let's grab a lot of that, since we're going to be expanding pretty early on. Simply to uh, build an enclosure to protect us from the weather. And also since um, we started a new game, we have seven day-night cycles before the first weather event uh, happens. So that we can nicely get set up and uh, be protected as soon as the first storm hits. So let's grab everything we can here. I've mined all the iron I could uh, see, and I'm just going to leave it in my inventory. Uh, since it's almost going to be day, and we're going to have um, some daylight to produce some power. So let's just check real quick. We've still got 60% battery in our suit. And let's maybe start expanding a bit. So what I'm going to do is take... Okay, I already got the frames. Uh, I think I'm just going to expand the platform a little bit so we have more space to work with. So let's expand it maybe one line further here and one more in depth. Cool. Now just a few drop the frames down here. And also get the sheets. So what I'm going to do now is just quickly um, replace uh, the, the solid generator and just place it one further, just like here maybe, so that it doesn't um, interfere with our solar panels. So cool, now we should start having power once the solar panel is lit, so this can be switched off so we can um, keep a little bit of battery charge. And one thing you're going to place down though is the battery charger, which is this right here. This is going to be vital to charge uh, our normal batteries and everything else. So we can place it just down here. And in the meantime, we're also going to do something which is placing down a power controller, which is basically just like uh, a light switch, 
but it's going to control our our power to uh, the, the whole system so take out the wire cutters simply drag and drop them over us and here you can see I can place it in two ways what we need is the power goes in the left side and goes out the right side so this is the correct way to place it now just use the crowbar to open it and flip the switch to on Also, here you can see, you might think that this means that the filter is off, but it's actually what happens if you press the, uh, the, the button here. So basically, currently those are all on, and same goes with here. This is on. So just put a battery in, and now we've got power. So what this system does is the solar panel uh, is going to get energy from the, uh, the, um, the sun, it's going to charge this battery, and at night this battery is going to help us keep this system all powered. So, since we've got a little bit of, uh, of power, we can simply drag and drop our ores into here and press the activate button. Just make sure that it's on, and while that's going, we can switch this off. So, for the solar panel, uh, <laughs> we need 20 iron, 2 gold, and 10 copper. So what I'm going to do is simply take um, the ores, and since we actually want to put this in here, since we actually want to smelt it rather fast, I'm going to split it in half. Since we only need 10 copper, I'm going to smelt those 24. So we've got almost 40 iron smelted. And also I can simply split those in half. If I can put it here. So I just take these. So different ores take different amount of times uh, to, uh, to smelt. Iron is one of the fastest in the, the arc furnace. So let's just smelt this. So now you've got an ingot. This one you can't stack or... So, so this, this ingot you cannot stack. If I press on it, it nothing happens. Only... what did happen now? It got into my inventory. So. Now that you've got the ingot, you need to feed it into the machine through this inlet here. Now it's inside of the machine and here you can see the contents, that's 50 grams of iron. So basically 50 pieces of uh, iron ore is going to go uh, give you 50 grams of uh, iron ingots. This is about the same for each uh, ingot. So now that we don't have any power left in our suit, we can simply drag and drop it to the battery and it's going to switch it out. Cool. Now let's just see, okay, 5 grams. So what I'm going to do really quick is get some cop uh, some um, some charcoal so that we can have some power at night. Since this is going to be important if only I had equipped the belt. So it's really important to equip the belt so that the ores can directly go into them and you don't need to pick them up. Okay. Was this just a single piece of charcoal? Seems like it. So let's search for some more. So the first stages of the, the station build is going to be mine in the day and build in the darkness. But uh, worry not, we're going to have some light soon, as soon as we have some more batteries. Since power is basically the most essential thing, depending on what slider you put your hunger rate on. Because this game can be pretty brutal if you've got a, a high hunger rate, since you're going to be eating all the time and needing to produce a lot of food. So let's see if we can get some more coal from here. So let's get a stack. And also, you have in your backpack, you've got a jetpack. But uh, be mindful, since the last update, they've um, increased the consumption rate, so it's going to drain your jetpack fuel pretty fast. So I would consider walking towards your destination in uh, every way you can before choosing the jetpack. Okay, so now that we've got this, we can simply pick this up with the hand. It's what I usually do, so you can take two more stacks into your hands and just walk back to the base.
Alright, so we're back at the base and the copper has been smelted, so let's just smelt our 7 gold and put the copper already into the machine, the autolithe to be precise. And now we have 24 iron, oh, 24 copper and 50 iron, and we only need 4 grams of gold to build two more solar panels. So if I deactivate it now, it should finish smelting the four, four grams. So now we've got four grams, I can print two more panels. Yes, we're just going to let it print. And meanwhile, we can already start connecting every, uh, every cable. So I just take out the tool belt, the wire cutters. And as you can see, it's in the middle every time. So we can just do this. Since we're going to print two, we're just going to plop down another one in the middle piece. Cool. Also connect the, uh, the solid generator. This is going to give us power uh, during the night so we can still print and smelt everything. Nice. So put this back here. Did it print one already? Oh, it's the electronic printer we wanted to do in the solar panel. Okay, so this is going to take some time to print. So let's see. Now, 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 now. We got a little bit more stuff. What I can do is connect also the uh, battery charger so that we can get our batteries charged. So get the straight piece. So now, if I switch the battery charger on, ah, okay, I can't place it here. It's going to be difficult. So let's maybe just place it down, down here, so that we only get power during uh, the day. This setup is really temporary, just so that we can get the basics down, um, and then start building our base. So don't forget to switch off the machines once you don't need them. In this case we're just going to finish processing everything. So, also, for the solid generator it's really easy. You only need coal, you pop it in, press activate, and it's going to turn on automatically. Once you deactivate it, this chute is going to open and displaying the last remaining uh, coal pieces. So we're just going to turn it on to, uh, to charge this, um, this battery and we should be good to go, as well as this beacon battery. So just put your battery in here and it's going to charge automatically as long as it has power, which is which it doesn't have at this point in time. So let's hope that the electronics printer is going to print everything fine. So you've got a lot of organic stuff which we are going to be using later. So this can all remain closed. The first things we're going to do now is disconnect our crates. This is important since crates don't get destructed in storms, but our lander will. So just disconnect everything. And to transport your crates, simply aim for the uh, the handle with an empty hand, and you can then transport it. And same as with tools, you can just drop them with the Q button. So just get this one and put it down here. It's going to get much easier to build uh, things around the base now. So you've got a full battery. You can just put it down here and put it into the charger, which can be turned off for now. So this is idling. We need to do smell something. And just be, be mindful, even when it's idling and has nothing um, in it or isn't doing anything, it still consumes power. So always switch off uh, your machines if you don't have um, a reliable power source. Currently we are still good on power so we don't have uh, no problem doing this. So let's see if we can build a solar panel. No we can't. So this is really important that's why we need the uh, electronics printer that we are just gonna build. So let's get the, the same iron sheets as before. The welding torch, we're also gonna need the plastic sheets. Now the cable coil and the plastic sheets. 
Now, we only need the screwdriver to finish off the construction, and we're good to go. So in here, we want the solar panel. So currently we have the choice between three of them. The portable, the solar panel as a kit, and the basic solar panel as a kit. This one is a portable we've placed down uh, at the beginning, which isn't really efficient at all. This one we can use some logic to make it follow the sun. And this one is basically our bare minimum, uh, the flat or the angled one, which we are going to build in the beginning. So for that we need 8 iron, 2 gold and 15 copper. So we have already smelted some stuff. With this lever you can empty your first machine of all its ingots, which we are basically just going to put into the other one. And see now, can we print one? No, we need more copper. Thankfully we have some more, if I'm not mistaken. Yes, here we have. And we can just print it. So let's just switch that off. And let's just fill this machine back up with for our ingots. So currently what we can also print is called a locker. This is really good to store some stuff early on. So this is basically um, a cupboard or a chest in Minecraft. So, you might be wondering why I printed two kits out. That's really um, interesting because in this game we have different variants of the same object. So here we have the double locker and this is the single locker. Uh, if you had only one kit, you would only be able to build the single one. But we want to build the, the double, which is going to give us four times more space. So this one you can just put down somewhere where you've got space actually. And then just open it. So here we've got Actually, five rows, we've got five times more space. So we can store all the ores we have just collected before. Cool. And also all the uh, the other items. This can store pretty much every item in the game. So we don't need the flares for now. So we can just <laughs> drop them. So let's just put them down. And we're good to go. So now we can turn this off. We should have some copper smelted by now. That means we can actually print the solar panel just now. We're going to print two of them and place them down immediately. So we can place them down here. You, you could theoretically place them down even closer, but I'm not all about space and efficiency. Just pick the beacon up, and now we just need to finish them up with glass panels. Cool. Now, we need the third machine, which is the, uh, the hydraulic pipe bender, which is this one. So we are going to need two gold and ten copper. Do we have some in here? So we don't have any copper left, which is quite unfortunate. So we're probably going to have to mine some more, as well as gold. But this gold... Oh, actually we do have gold right here. Let's just use this and smelt it. All right. Oh, and also, if you don't have any battery in this left, you can just quickly switch out for a smaller battery, which has less charge though. So, during the night I went ahead and mined a bit of uh, iron, gold and, uh, and copper. So we're going to smelt that right now, since we need a little bit more for our hydraulic pipe bender. Which costs um, 15 copper and 20 gold. So let's just put those right here, if I'm not mistaken. Nope, that's not the right one. So let's just switch up our battery real quick. Yes, we should have enough for a hydraulic pipe bender. So let's just wait this to print. And if you're suffering from hunger, here in the bottom right uh, of your screen, 
you have got your vitals, this is the um, amount of hunger, uh, of the hunger bar, as you would have in Minecraft, for example, that's remaining. Once that drops below zero, you are going to start having negative effects on your health. Also here you can see something immediately to the right, which is a bearing, so that if you you know which way you go uh, in the night, you can always find back your base, if you just turn back 180 degrees. Also one thing I would suggest you do in the beginning of, um, of your game, is here you have different options. Here you can see you can um, up the temperature or lower it. Uh, what you can do immediately is uh, lower the pressure, so just press pressure down, and you see here on the HUD the pressure is going down. So maybe lower it to, to 30 kPa so that it doesn't have to compensate for the pressure difference between the outside atmosphere and uh, your inner suit uh, too much, as well as the temperature can go down to maybe 15 degrees. All of this is going to help you preserve um, battery life on your suit. So 44 percent. So let's just store the ores quickly. So here we have the, um, the hydraulic pipe bender. We can simply place it down, the preview, and start finishing it up. So just take out the iron sheets and plastic sheets. While we're at it, we can also quickly print some cable coils since we don't have any um, any more left. So two of those. Just put them here and finish building up the hydraulic pipe bender. So let's do this. Put it back on and don't forget to turn the welding torch off every time you put it away. So let's just finish it and here we have it. So this is basically going to be your basic production area to start building your, your main base and uh, start producing every item you need in the game. So this is the basic setup. So, thank you for watching and next episode is going to be on the um, furnace which is not going to operate with power but with gas. So that's going to be the whole next episode. So thank you again for watching and see you there.